Good morning, everyone. Quite, I don't know if I'm relieved or not that Facebook's back um, up and running, but yeah, definitely relieved. I wasn't quite sure last night what I was going to do if Facebook wasn't on and how we would cope or how, how we would all cope without reflections. I wonder how we would cope without reflections. Probably very well. But anyway, Facebook is back up and running and we're into the Tuesday, the 5th of October. A new day and Social media is back up and running, so what's not to like? But the question for you is perhaps, how do you decide what you're going to wear each day? Some of you probably just fall into whatever was there the day before. Perhaps you lay out your clothes. Perhaps you look at your diary and see what the day is going to hold and then plan it from there. Look out the window, see what the weather's like, plan it from there. Perhaps it's quite straightforward. Perhaps if it's a school day and you've got a uniform, then that's very straightforward. Or perhaps your work has a uniform that you have to wear. And whether or not the, the colour or the style or what you would choose, you just have to go on with it. And there is no choice. What we wear, how we choose what to wear. For me, quite often it's what's clean, what's clean what's um, ready to wear and to a certain extent what fits. But of course it does also depend on what the day holds and I've always got to be make very sure that I know when it's a Sunday that I do have to get a bit more dressed up for the church service. But for meetings, <clears throat> for going to see people or for working at home, for having to go into the office, maybe this is your one day of the week or the month that you have to actually go in and you have to remember that you do have to perhaps um, get changed and, and dress up a little bit, even if it's only to the extent of putting on outdoor shoes rather than your slippers so that when you get on the bus, it doesn't look too obvious that you've not been out for some time. What will you wear? Perhaps it's not one outfit for the day. Perhaps you change very, very quickly. Perhaps for you go out first thing in the morning, take the dog a walk and you go in the scruffy stuff that you've got and you come back and get changed from eating and you come back and go out again with the dog so you get changed again or change your shoes or change your feet or get wet and have to change again. What we wear is important and it's important not only that we wear what is right for the moment and the occasion but if at all possible that we are comfortable and of course that it is appropriate to what we are doing. As I've grown older I think it's become more um, pronounced and prominent that choosing what I wear sometimes is decided from the feet up. You choose the footwear first because if you're not able to be comfortable walking and getting to where you need to be then you're going to struggle for the rest of the day. Um, I think probably more than once I have left a, a meeting or something important where I have been dressed up and had to stop at perhaps a, a superstore on the way back to get some flat shoes that are comfy, <laughs> that I can relax in. Shoes are important. Shoes are those the part of the clothing that, that touches the ground, if you like, that needs to connect us to what we're doing and where we are. And perhaps you've got lots of shoes. Perhaps you've got a shoe fetish. Perhaps you keep them forever. I've got a, a range of shoes that, you know, I need to wear. And of course, if I'm out walking the dog, then it's the, the, the muddy boots, the waterproof boots, so that they've got good traction, so that I don't necessarily fall over too often or slide down hills or whatever. I can be on beaches, I can be in the forests, I can be anywhere in my wonderful muddy warm boots. But there are other shoes that I have, older shoes, and sometimes you've got to realise that no matter how comfortable shoes might be, that you're really best to get rid of them before they fall to bits um, when you're wearing them, when you're actually wearing them. But that's a whole other story. Those shoes are well gone. But I do have a pair of, of clogs 
everyone remember clogs now they are very worn and very much looking the worst of wear and I think you know very soon I will have to be very brave and put them in the bin and certainly I no longer wear them out unless I forget that I've got them on of course but you know they're still useful for nipping out the bins out to the garden still very useful just to slip on to to do something outside locally so they're still there they're 30 35 years old and they are beginning to fall to bits so i will have to do something about them but i do still wear them i've got other shoes some of you will remember the good old flip-flops still of course worn today these ones have rarely been worn at all um i actually got them handed down to me um by my brother um, and this was in the early 70s he had worn them outgrown them handed them on to me i wore them i think once twice maybe a few times more but they're still there because well they've not fallen apart yet there's they're still functional they're not the comfiest but they're still functional and if something's functional i do have a problem throwing things out if there's still some use in them so they've been held on to but i think if i pluck up the courage um, to get rid of the clogs I think they might go as well because they're never worn they're sitting there they are kind of fit for purpose but not really because I don't have the purpose that they would be fit for and so really they should go I have other shoes other shoes that I'm going to show you now and um, there's two pairs of them so I'll try and show you them both at the same time these are our little shoes little tiny shoes there's these Lovely little one. They've got the, the little ankle so that um, for a baby's first shoe and these other ones also for shoes and with the ankle and the lace ups. And yeah, they're a bit older than the clogs or indeed the flip flops because these shoes um, belong to my brother and I. These are our first shoes and held on to by my mum, obviously because they are of sentimental value, held on to by me, because, because why not? <laughs> and no doubt they'll be passed on eventually, and whether they survive that passing on, who knows? But little shoes, no longer fit for purpose, because ah, they don't fit me anymore. Um, but the purpose of reminding me of time's gone by and of the fact that we learned to walk at one point we had special shoes special important moments in life milestones of standing up and walking and so these shoes are important in our memories perhaps now as you see there's one very dainty pair and there's one kind of very solid pair and as you probably expect those of you who know me the nice gentle dainty pair yeah these are my brothers and I got the nice clumpy ones some things are just set in stone from the moment you arrive in this world so they're not fit for a purpose of being used but they still have a purpose of memories so that purpose is there all this talk about footwear about what we wear on our feet important it is for me change that to a symbolism of our lives and how we walk through our life how we get through our life how we travel through our life because we need different things at different times our lives change or they should so that we're no longer simply learning to walk but we need stronger shoes sturdier shoes different styles of shoes for different things so it is with our faith life that we should be progressing through our life learning as we go and so we clothe ourselves, our, our feet and our bodies, but most of all our hearts and our minds and our spirits differently as we grow older, as we mature in faith, as we learn different things about faith, as our journey takes us to, to different places. And sometimes it's difficult to be prepared for that part of the journey. But other times it really isn't that hard if we stop and think what it is that we need. Now, in our journey of faith and in the journey of, of our church and our communities and our nation and our world at the moment, 
What is it that we need to be wearing on our feet, in our hearts, in our minds? I think we need to be wearing more of the, um, the things that Jesus told us we should be having and showed us that we can have and share. Compassion, gentleness, kindness, tenderness. But also perhaps the, the stronger shoes for standing up to injustice that is there. Standing up for people who can't stand up for themselves in the, the faith, in the life that we, we live around us today. So it's not about our physical clothing so much, but it is certainly about how we present ourselves, how we think this day is going to be and what we're going to need. And to a certain extent, we can prepare for that. We can lay those clothes out, those things that we'll need out the night before because they're the same each day. That kindness, that forgiveness, that reconciliation that's required. But sometimes there are things that we need on the spur of the moment. And for that, we depend on God's Spirit to give to us the words that we need, the actions that we need, the time that we need, perhaps. If we think we're, we're rushed through the day, but something suddenly demands our attention and our time, someone demands our attention and our time, then God will give us that time and help us to perhaps save time elsewhere or help us to at least see the priorities that we thought we had are not the priorities that we really should have. We learn to walk in faith and that can be a gentle process, it can be a bumpy process, it can involve a lot of falling down as can the other stages of our faith journey. But if we're prepared to look around us and if we're prepared to try and think ahead to what we might need and take with us, then we are better prepared for this day and every day. So whether or not you've got little dainty feet that, um, you know, obviously take up the nice, soft, lovely calf skin, or whether you've got more clunky um, leather ones, that's not so important. What is important that where we stand and how we stand in faith and with God is seen by the world, for the world, to bring the world to be able to stand tall with justice and in peace. Let us pray. Lord God, you walk with us and when we stumble or wander off, when we have the wrong footwear or clothing, you are there to clothe us with all that we need and to set us on the path that we're meant to be on. Lord Jesus, you came to catch us when we miss our step, to guide us when the road is rough and when the way ahead seems to be barred. But you see our way forward and you remain with us to steady us, to encourage us, to be our companion. Holy Spirit, so many dangers in our world remain unseen by our eyes, unheard by our ears, and we get scared. We get scared of the what ifs and the could happens. So may we know you, the Holy Spirit of God, unseen, but with us. The Spirit of God around us, who sees and hears and knows all, and is there to invite us to see the positive what-ifs, the encouraging could-happens. So what if we turn to you today, if we feel worried or concerned? What if we ask God for help before we crumble in a heap? What if we take Jesus at his word and accept that relationship and friendship? Well, maybe then this world could be different for us and for all. Maybe then we could feel hope in our words and actions and find our confidence grow. Maybe if we each morning, every moment, invited you, God, to be part of our clothing, we could see with your eyes 
feel with your compassion and live in your peace. Lord, clothe us today in the gifts of your Spirit. Make us ready for our day and ready for the world. Ready to go where you lead, knowing that every step you are with us. We pray in Jesus' name and we pray for the sake of all creation. Amen. So footwear. In the house I tend to go around my stocking soles. So footwear is not such a problem in the house. But outside, let's think what we wear when we go out to meet people, to see people, to engage with the world. And know that the invisible God is there always to clothe us well. Whatever your day holds, wherever you go, whomever you meet or talk to, be blessed and be a blessing and make this world all it can be. God bless.